discussion for the day, the theme of the panel is digital strategies to survive and thrive in the new normal. I'm not the expert here. Let me invite forward the leaders for you, everybody. Here they come. Our first panelist, we have Ajay Kakkar, Chief Marketing Officer, Aditya Birla Capital. As our second panelist, we have Bilain Gandhi, Senior Director and Category Head, Foods PepsiCo India. We have with us Moksh Chopra, Chief Marketing Officer, KFC. We have with us Nidhi Hola, Director, Integrated Marketing, Microsoft India. We have with us Ruchira Jaitley, CMO, HMD Global. And we have with us Siddhartha Butalia, Chief Marketing Officer, Air Asia. And chairing this session, everybody, is Vivek Bhargava, CEO of Dan Performance Group, Dental Ages Network. Now, he's someone who began his uh, entrepreneurial journey in the year 1997 when he founded Communicate2, the company that joined hands with iProspect from the Dental Agents Network in 2012, and led the new entity iProspect Communicate2 as founder and managing uh, director. The company was rebranded as iProspect India at the end of 2015, with the date as CEO till 2016, where he assumed his present position. I'm going to hand this over to our able moderator for the rest of the session. Have a good one, everyone, and thank you for joining us and giving us your time. At they too, of take Thanks, Gitika. Pleasure of moderating the session. I think we've had very exciting conversations just planning the panel. So I think now is the time for the show. So I'm going to start off with uh, each of the panelists where they can just give a very, very short introduction about themselves and sort of give their position and take on the topic. So I'm going to go with the screen the way I'm seeing the screen. So we start with you, Moksh. Would love to have your two minutes on the topic and your positioning. Sure. Thanks, Avik. Uh, so my name is Moksh Chopra. I work at Yum Brands. Uh, I head marketing for KFC in India. You know, I mean, the fact is the last few months have uh, tested our ability to adapt as humans, uh, resultantly as businesses as well. And let me tap into a couple of aspects that kind of are relevant for our conversation today. One of the biggest emergent responses, I would say, has been what we call the uh, accelerated habit shift. The digital adoption curve, I think, has accelerated quite a bit. You know, while this suits the digital natives just fine, you know, the Gen Z, the millennials, maybe some of our kids or nephews and nieces, the fact is there is a whole slew of new users who are entering the digital, digital ecosystem for the first time. And this is both due to desire or compulsion. In fact, uh, there was a study I saw uh, by McKinsey in the so, US. So Moksha, yeah. Moksha, I'm not able to hear you very clearly. Is all the other most clearly then we just go on is everybody yeah, able to hear me? yes yeah? we can okay looks like my connection is bad then okay fair enough no worries yes yeah, so i was talking about the study that mckinsey did in the us about 33 percent of the digital users in the last few months uh, have actually been first time e-commerce users of the respective categories so something like called digital debutants for the categories even back home in india you know the arogya setu app 150 million users plus in just a few weeks. So there's obviously a clear need to provide both intuitive and easy experiences, not just for the digital native, but I would say for the digital flirters, for the digital deputants for our categories and making sure that we design the UI and UX, which is easy for them. The other observation that I'll quickly tap into is what we call the rise of the home body. The fact is, uh, you know, people's relationship with their home has evolved over the last few months. Uh, they've been engaging in what we call comfortable indulgences. Creative sites have been emerging. A small set of people have got comfortable with working from home as well. And you know, um, and and well, there's no doubt that people are st going to start stepping out for work, for important tasks, meeting close ones, and over time, even for entertainment. The fact is, the comfort that the home has provided in the last few months is going to stay in people's psyche for some time. And hence, I feel that. You know, businesses would need to and continue to enhance their relevance on this front, build home accessibility using tech propositions like contactless and, you know, uh, and, and initiatives around those fronts. So while it's clear and undeniable that there is a digital thrust, the one thing I will leave us with is that in the midst of the digital thrust, I think we can't forget the aspect of providing what we call a trustworthy human interaction. We shouldn't forget about that and keep finding ways to merge the digital and the physical worlds through the respective journey our businesses and brands go through. Yeah. So that's a quick uh, overview of uh, my take on the topic in question. Thanks, Vivek. 
Also, Moksha, I think uh, one of the things that I remember about US was that in 10 years, it has grown, the e-commerce had grown from 7 to 16, and then grew from 16 to 27% in last, last four months in just terms of e-commerce, right? So I think everything that Lenin said, right, that uh, sometimes decades happen in a few weeks, right? Sometimes decades, nothing happens. So I think that's what's happening in the digital industry. So over to you, Nidhi, would love to have your views uh, on, on the topic. Sure. Thanks, Vivek, and thanks for the perspective, uh, Moksh. Uh, I'm Nidhi. I lead integrated marketing at Microsoft India. And I wanted to share um, my perspective from the customer lens. So as to what has changed from a customer perspective, the way we interact with the customers. So there are three broad trends that I personally am seeing. The first one is on the customer behavior. You know, the same customer is easily distracted, like always was, and the same customer can be indistractable. So let me explain what I mean. So our, you know, our traditional classification of a customer as one personality type was always flawed. You know, there's multiple personality types in all of us. There's yin and yang in all of us. So on one hand, we enjoy um, Nike longish format content or body form boom stories. And then the same customer is also sharing TikTok videos. So this combination of distracted and indistractable mindset or behavior of the customer is really exaggerated and magnified in this uh, virtual world. And so as a marketeer, having one strategy to crack that customer behavior will not work. So that's one thing. Uh, the second one that I want to call out is the, you know, the virtual world how we need as marketeers to embrace the virtual world. How do we see it as an opportunity, get creative, innovate to help the customer manage the current situation? Because we're not limited by geography anymore. So in the B2B world where I come from, if I had to host a conference and call somebody from Coimbatore to a Delhi, I'm taking away a full day. But now it's an opportunity. I can actually reach out to that customer, educate them, skill them, and meet their needs in a virtual scenario. And with that, I can actually build what Moksha also suggested, which is meaningful, honest relationships with my customer. So the third one that I want to call out is customer centricity and empathy. So these are not just phrases or words in the brand uh, manifestos anymore, Vivek. You know, it is here and now. And for, and for this, the age old debate of brand and performance really needs to end. We need to focus on performance, but at the same time, not lose sight of the brand. Brand is who we are. Brand is our soul. So we need to invest in building that brand equity today, any size of organization, so that we're able to earn the customer's trust. So as I see it, these three would be the, the changes in the customer way of interacting with brands, which is it's a virtual world. You want a seamless experience, uh, customer centricity and empathy, and of course, managing the changing customer behavior of being distracted and indistractable. I think bang on, uh, Nidhi, I think uh, I used to, my daughter is 17 years old and I used to think that she has an attention span of a goldfish. But in the last four months, we've done a lot of courses together and one of them was a four hour workshop every day for four days in a row. And she sat through all four of the hours and I realized that each of us have different personas and depending on what kind of uh, content we are consuming, we keep on changing. It's almost a schizophrenic kind of a personality that each person has. And it's bang on. I think it's, it's lovely to hear that. And how do marketers actually look at that personality and then create content according to that personality, which people are. Next, over to you, Siddharth. would love to have your views. Hi, thanks. And very interesting to hear both of you actually talk. I was sort of ruminating over the, the different challenges that we've faced in the aviation context, probably one of the hardest hit from the pandemic so far. Uh, so I look after marketing, PR and comms, um, and sustainability for in India. Uh, one of the things which I fall back upon on, on a lot of these areas that I think has got accentuated in this current crisis is a maxim that was formed by a gentleman called William Gibson, who's a cyberpunk author who said something to the effect of, I think the future's already here. It's just not very easily distributed. And this is a, a recasting of um, what we call the variant rule. Uh, variant, or, I mean, I, I started economics. So, uh, Hall Varian is, the, is a microeconomist, but also now I think the chief economist for, uh, for Google. And he said a simple way to forecast uh, the future is to look at what rich people have today. And middle income people will have the equivalent 10 years from now Poor people will have it in an additional decade. 
uh, the manner in which that consumer need is met is not necessarily the same though. So digital tends to drive that customer journey and precipitate variant rule in many ways. So to take a couple of quick examples, um, rich people traditionally don't wait in line, right? Uh, you have minions, you have butlers, you have concierges, etc. cetera. Uh, the digital rich today have apps and wearables which are fulfilling the same service. Uh, or the rich would always have personal assistants. The digital rich today have Google Assistant or chatbot. So in this pandemic, we've actively deployed, for example, our chatbot on WhatsApp. Uh, and going to the change in demographic that we spoke about, we've enabled that to happen in Hindi as well, because we noticed a lot of contact center inputs that were coming in were happening in vernacular. People were choosing Hindi or vernacular languages on the IVR. Uh, or the other maxim, for example, is that the rich don't go to the mountain, right? The mountain comes to the rich. The whole gig economy of, you know, the shut-in economy, Amazon Prime, Netflix, Uber Eats, your cinema hall comes home, your food comes home, etc. Uh, so a lot of that is things that we're deploying because we're realizing people are used to that service. Uh, one of the things which we took out recently as a service offering, for example, is something called Fly Porter, which is a doorstep to doorstep baggage delivery. So you don't carry your baggage to the airport. Somebody will come home, pick it up for you. Uh, it'll go to the airport and wherever you're going to, it seamlessly sort of drops off at the hotel at your destination. So I think a lot of these things have got accentuated, which were things that we were thinking would be, uh, like was mentioned by uh, by Moksha Nidhi before this, things that would happen 10 years down the line have happened in, in a very near term. So that, that's my quick take on it, I think. No, I perfectly agree, Siddharth, but I you know one quick thing out there is that uh, at one point in time in the 80s, you know, Nidhi would find it interesting, Vintel, which is Windows and Intel, owned 110% of the industry profits. So companies that actually cater to that rich, where 20% of the customers give you 200% of their profits, can actually have a completely different strategy for that 20%. And yeah. I think digital is allowing us to do that. And I think it's going to be a very critical role because we're going to have lesser marketing budgets. We have lesser marketing budgets, then it'll be very essential for us to provide these velvet rope marketing, as Rajesh Jain calls it, services to certain people. Uh, and I think that's where the opportunity is. Because we reduce budget, you have to reach out to lesser people, then better reach out to the best customers you can. So, okay. So next, uh, Ajay, would love to have your views. Yeah, hi, Vivek. Uh, you know, if I look at myself uh, with the gray hair that I have, if I look at myself as a marketeer, or if I look at myself as a representative of the financial services industry, so what do I have on my plate? The first is Purani Kahavatar, you know, the old order uh, changes yielding place to the new. And I've always uh, in recent years heard uh, people talking about the importance of learning, unlearning and relearning. And I thought it was meant for veterans like me. I think what the pandemic has taught us is that this applies to every single one of us, the youngest in the profession, the youngest in the consumer and of course the senior citizens, because everyone is at par when the surrounding world changes and changes. so. Uh, 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 dramatically. So a person like me who would never do without my uh, morning newspaper today has discovered uh, the e-paper and uh, doing very well with it. Thank you. On the other hand, a customer who I thought financial services would only want high touch today is discovering high touch within high tech like we're doing out here across the table. So if you ask me, I think it's just like driving or swimming. Uh, while we all look forward to getting out of our confines, we all look forward to getting back to life as usual, behaviors have changed and changed dramatically. But while on one hand, I'll say never say never, I believe technology has to be an enabler. The mistake some of us do is we start and end with technology and consumer comes next. If we start with what is the consumer journey? What is the consumer pain point? What can we address and then find the technology? I think we will be able to find out that high tech can lead to even higher touch. And that's why I think we are very fortunate at Aditya Birla Capital, which is a financial services conglomerate. And as you reminded me, Vivek, yesterday, yes, we are the only brand who has gone to consumer as one. So I know that we have emerged far stronger as a brand and business post March 2020. And for example, while everyone is trying to reach out to their customers, uh, we own both health and wealth platform, which no other brand today can rightfully go to consumer as. Two is we've realized that till yesterday we had push categories like life insurance today and health insurance, they have become pull categories. Third is we've realized that as one brand, we look at all customers as customers for our businesses, 
rather than for any one business. So at the back end, uh, you know, above the wall, as they say, this has become a great advantage for us. So our model has actually been tested and proven, let me say, <laughs> right, thanks to all of this. What was direct, uh, what was advisor driven industry is today a direct to brand uh, category. And last but not the least, we were relying more on offline uh, uh, consumer connects. Uh, today, they have become predominantly online consumer connects. So I think we've benefited a lot. But as long as we keep the customer experience the hero rather than the technology, I think we shall remain in a good place. So just adding to that, I think I remember one incident with my father. So I would bought him an iPad and he refused to touch it. But what I realized was that he would get up at 4 a.m. and the paper would come in at 6 a.m. So that two hours, he was so uh, anxious of what's happened in the world that he doesn't know about. So then I taught him how to use the newspaper on his iPad. And then it became his morning newspaper much before <laughs> the newspaper came in. So I think, as you said, right, if you can solve a problem, then even the hardcore uh, people who probably my father was not that tech savvy, but he adopted it because it solved a problem for him. So I think that's what we as brand owners must try to do. How do we solve our customers' problems? If you allow me to come back for one second, I think what yeah. you said about yourself and your father is what brands need to do. If yeah. each brand decides to teach one rather than hope for the consumer to find himself or discover himself, you will suddenly find the market expand dramatically. Yeah. So actually, I invested in this company called Empowerly that reaches elderly people using technology. But we found that now 50% of our users actually are not <laughs> elderly at all. They just tech challenge. <laughs> They're learning technology through these kind of things. OK, Ruchira, your views? <laughs> That's a great segue, actually. Uh, because you, know, you spoke about two or three things about consumer first, technology later. Let me give you a contrarian view, Ajay. Uh, we are about technology first. So I'm the head of marketing at HMD, the home of Nokia devices. So for us, the phones that we hold is the technology. Uh, I also look after, by the way, the portfolio, which is what's the kind of portfolio of products that you launch and uh, go to market. And it's an interesting confluence. And if you look at it, um, two or three things I'm going to reference, which actually talks about what our big experience has been over the last quarter. Uh, when we connected earlier, uh, I think uh, th the singular piece that I'd like to leave you with, and I heard Laurent say that in the last session as well, is the pivot and the transformation for a business and how, as someone who's holding together business, marketing, consumer, and product insights, you can actually fuel the strategy to drive that pivot. And that's why it's a really exciting time, if you ask me, for a, for a marketer or indeed for someone who's running categories in a business. Because the ability to pivot and use this moment to actually drive the organization towards what will be the future and thinking future back to what Siddharth said earlier is probably what's going to distinguish one organization maybe from another in terms of garnering share of moment. Um, I think uh, two or three big things that uh, you know we did. One was we, we've done a pulse index. Surprise, surprise. More Indian consumers than global consumers intend to shop more frequently online and use digital payments. So versus a global average of about between 40 and 50% for some of these, we're at a 60%. Equally, Indian consumers are happier to go on to omni-channel and therefore looking at a blended experience. To your point, not just high touch, but high touch and high tech. I mean, remember, I'm in a category where if I don't see the device, how do I know it's going to work? Interestingly, again, to what uh, Vivek, you alluded to earlier, the people coming into the market, the, the new upgraders, and there's a there's a really nice piece of work by Google about it, which talks about, you know, people who who understand uh, or who are internet savvy, and recent upgraders. Recent upgraders are coming on not just for entertainment; they're coming on for learning, for for access to services, products and services. So it, the world is changing. Whom you can talk to and the products and services you can deliver. To what you said, Siddharth, a lot of it is in, in vernacular. So everything that you're saying, and, and I love these panels because sometimes you actually congregate all of these different insights from different industries and you find what's driving it is an overall consumer energy that is, is much larger. And then, of course, we see it manifest in different ways across our different categories. So it's a very exciting time for me personally, uh, moving from what was food, you know beverages and food and Billion comes next, it's the category I used to be on. Uh, but uh, moving from there into what is a tech product and then looking at, therefore, what products do we innovate on? How do we go to market with those products is now becoming a completely different set of questions. 
and a different uh, opportunity to monetize. And as a marketer, a very exciting time. Yeah. Thanks. So one thing I'll add, Ruchira, you know, that I think even though sometimes it's tech first, but I think that, so let me give you an example. I have a friend of mine who uses a Nokia phone, the old phone, right? The reason he uses it is that it's got an eight day battery life. So if you're just speaking and not doing anything else other than speaking on the phone, it lasts for eight days. Now he travels a lot and he's not found any other phone that has an eight day battery life, right? So no, I think so as brand marketer, yeah, yeah, you'd be surprised. I'm sorry, I'm going to cut you here. This is really exciting. A lot of our feature phones that we sell today at a considerable premium, a premium of 100% plus maybe to some other devices, are to people like you and me. We've got a primary device. And believe me, a lot of those device owners are iPhone users. But they want a device in which they can put aside their smartphone and all the distractions and get down to work, stay connected. And actually, our connectivity on those devices is above par and superior to anything else in the world. So stay connected, but at the same time, uh, you know, focus on the task. So to your point on digital, I mean, there is just ADHD. And I'd say, you know, hyper hyperactive digital disorder actually is the way I'd put it. Exactly. So in that ADHD age, there was, yes, uh, there was a police officer from Orissa who actually turned around and said, told, gave an advice to a UPSC a aspirant. Uh, he said, what do I do? He said, uh, you know, to get through uh, the <laughs> UPSC. And he said, uh, just buy a Nokia 5310. It's on Twitter. And it went viral, right? Because uh, then a distributor, of course, stepped in and said, I'm going to sponsor it for this guy who wants to aspire to it. And there were 15 other students who said, oh, we'd also like the same devices. Because the fact is, you want connectivity, but not. Uh, so yeah, I'm sorry. That's a really, it was really cute. It happened just what, five days ago. Really, really interesting anecdote. We spoke about indistractable. So I had a chance to attend his webinar. And there is an app called Forest. You install the forest. If you pick up your phone, then the tree dies. So anybody who wants indistractable stuff, it's an amazing app. Dylan, on that note, your views? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to build on what uh, <clears throat> uh, I've heard so far. And I think. Um, the paradigm that I see um, happening is that this current situation is actually not a disruption. It's an acceleration. Um, everything that we are seeing today would have happened eventually, um, whether it is more in home consumption of uh, our products, whether it is uh, more adoption of digital technology in terms of consumption of media or in terms of uh, purchase behavior. All of those things would have eventually happened. Um, that kind of paradigm then. Uh, gives you leaves you with kind of two implications, uh, right? Um, number one is what we are therefore experiencing is uh, a significant acceleration in that adoption, uh, right? And that means that speed um, is going to be a significant lever of competitive advantage or disadvantage. The other one is um, that uh, expecting consumers to reverse back to what uh, they were in the past is probably not going to happen because um, over a period of time, they would have uh, gotten used to it. So both those things put together are, are kind of going to have an important implication on, a, on how we uh, not just market to the consumers, but how we serve them, uh, right? Um, the two things also that come through that implication is that um, the underlying behaviors or the underlying needs have not changed, right? The consumers are still looking from, from bag of chips. They're still looking for great quality and at great value right uh, the context has changed for sure but if you think back as marketeers the context has always been changing uh, some of us who've lived through the earlier rounds of transition um, right whether it was from print to analog from analog to digital have had to adapt to the different contexts every time uh, what therefore is important is that we understand how the context has changed for consumers um, and adapt ourselves to that. Um, you know, the fact that the distribution reach that you have is no longer a source of competitive advantage because a lot more of your shoppers are on e-commerce and e-commerce has suddenly leveled the playing field for everyone. Um, means that you need to activate other uh, levers of uh, advantage. And that's where I think data comes into play because you can really, in a very, very fragmented world, um, you know, where consumer experiences are fragmenting, um, use data as a means of convergence. Uh, you can serve ads to consumers uh, differently. 
you can uh, serve product assortments to them differently um and that i think is is the way in which the context will influence many of the choices that we need to make so i i 100% echo the uh, you know uh, and that's probably because of our pepsi lineage what ruchira said um uh, it's a very very exciting time to 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 be a marketer and and uh, you know i i just uh, can't wait to see where this journey takes us but dilin you know the challenge is that uh, in the linear world if something gets accelerated 10 years right it's still linear the problem is we are living living in an exponential world so when one becomes two becomes four becomes million the million goes to 2 million 4 million 8 million 16 So the challenge is how do organizations match up with it, right? Because that's where the biggest challenge is. So I attended this Singularity University, and one thing they taught us was just create an Excel sheet and say, okay, if this technology is one percent today, what was it ten years ago, fifteen years ago, thirty years ago? And then you draw that graph, and it's scary because in five years' time, it is going to be scary proportions. But unfortunately, in the last four months, ten years have passed. So there are a lot of technologies that have bro- bro- broken out. become an exponential reach a certain size already and now they're going to multiply exponentially thereafter so i think we all marketers have a pretty tough job to do in the next 10 years because a lot of things have suddenly become big and they're going to start multiplying at a very very rapid scale in the next few years right so while i'm with you dilin i would love to have your views on two things one is is the customer journey uh changing because of what has happened in covid and the other is also the how important is keeping track of sort of customer sentiment so i i think it's a it's a great segue of what you said i think the 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 biggest change um whenever the context has changed biggest change actually happens in between the years right and i think the mindset that um we have actually adopted is one to be much more iterative um right and i'll I'll take an example of what we uh, recently did, which will kind of uh, help answer that. Uh, uh, you know, Siddharth mentioned, um, uh, and and so did Ajay and and Nidhi. All three of them actually mentioned about uh, the uh, the need for uh, consumer centricity. And um, uh, fortunately, we have social listening and all of these tools that enable us to kind of keep a track on how the consumer is uh, feeling. Um, what we realized was um uh, you know that there is a very strong need for empathy uh with consumers and uh, that's where we said okay we have this one piece of content that we had not done much with and how do we uh, you know uh, put it out there uh and uh, uh, it's called it's a campaign that we did recently called lays hard work and uh, it was an ode to um, everybody who's uh, involved in bringing a lace packet to life right uh, right from the farmer to the truck drivers to the retailers to the factory workers and all of that um and uh, that was always a story that we wanted to tell but we thought that uh, you know through the listening that it was going to be a very pertinent time to uh, tell it uh, and it was just this little one thing that we were going to do and then move on and then the responses started coming in and that's where we the, the agility point came in you know we scored the highest completion views of any video that we had put out ever on youtube and we said okay we are on to something and then we started building up uh, from there on right we got influencers on board um, uh, you know and and now we're sitting on a campaign which is 225 million views 66 million uh, you know uh, engagement uh, 150 million in pr value you know and most importantly along the journey we also partnered with the ngo and we were able to get 50000 pp kits made available for um, uh, the frontline workers who are not pepsico uh, related these were people who are related not related to pepsico outside the pepsico ecosystem because those we had already taken care of um and this entire campaign would not have existed if we had not kept our um, uh, ears close to the ground and then adapted as we understood one of the things that we heard was you know great why are uh, you know why are other brands not doing it and so we created this whole brand chain where we united um 40 other brands to participate uh, uh, by thanking them um you know and they are a front line for the hard work that they were creating and and uh, moksh is a customer of ours and uh, we were happy uh, to thank afc on behalf of uh, you know their consumer so i think that that kind of momentum that it, uh, some some of these things and create can catch you by surprise um 
and one of the enablers for me um, in this period has been to be able to push the decision making lower down in the organization um, and trusting a lot more um, you know the, those who are actually at the front line of the work that we do you know the young brand managers or the young digital manager marketing managers or or even the agency folks um, taking bets on some of their uh, intuition is something that um, really paid off for us and i think that's something that i will carry forward and hopefully that will help answer uh, you know uh, some of the challenges that you vivek you were uh, alluding to earlier so like two things that you covered uh, one i think was that partnership with different brands and i feel that i think that's a very interesting thought because collaboration has become a new competitive advantage and all the wall gardens are finding out different ways of of not sharing first party data whether it's the ios updates whether it's anybody who per se is following the cookie apocalypse that is happening with chrome browsers etc i think brands have first party data and if non competitive brands actually come together and collaborate i think they can actually improve each other's advertising substantially and i think uh, as a segue what you mentioned i think is a very interesting idea which i think a lot of brands definitely must explore uh, one of the other things we mentioned was empathy and i think uh, that is a question that i think i and siddharth have been discussing that i think what is the role of empathy in the binary world and a lot of tasks are being replaced in the marketing advertising as well as in the customer service world with ai and people like nidhi are helping in that process so how do how do we balance that how do we get empathy in the binary world so that would love to have your views so i mean it's interesting as i was saying all of this has got quite quite accentuated uh, and i think as dilan was also saying the levers of competitive advantage have changed uh now unfortunately i'm cognizant that we come from an industry that has moved from its heyday of service differentiated experiences to what is relatively cookie cutter um and not many i mean we'll speak up on it but we must admit that the airline experience across brands is not very differentiated and brands have started now playing on what should be hygiene factors whether it's safety credentials which everybody essentially has as an industry if you don't that's an issue right uh, or on time performance and you know we harp on it ourselves we we're quite proud of the fact that you know we've been number one on time performance across the last year etc i think what what one digital has enabled us to do is to drive a lot of that uh, because behaviors have changed in the last month for example we've effectively hit been able to hit a record 98.1% on time performance because consumers have uh, almost entirely been web checking in uh, or they've been doing contactless payments and things like that uh, but in that environment in a very regulated environment where uh you know prices are controlled currently uh, and are mandated across the board we don't have price differentiation uh everyone from the guests to the cabin crew are wearing uh masks face shields you know you don't get to see the crew who are otherwise smiling at you who are the beacons of what the service experience is you don't see the uniforms they're wearing gowns uh we're not serving meals in the flights how do you differentiate yourself in this so from small aspects like the crew trying to retrain themselves on how do you smile with your eyes from behind a face shield or a mask or how do you bring alive uh, you know that service experience i think it's it's very very important as we go down this route of digital by which is by nature binary um in remembering that we must bring out the empathy and the human experience especially in a service industry and it's a it's a constant dichotomy that we face as we deploy more and more uh, digital things that whole thing of binary versus you know exploration sensory exploration or uh, you know you look at uh, other elements like even what we're doing with data in terms of hyper personalization versus what you may call privatized surveillance right uh, how do you bridge the gap between these two as you deploy technology to do that i think that's a constant struggle that uh, that we're dealing with honestly so siddharth i have a content idea for you i think you need to teach us also how do you smile with your eyes <laughs> because <laughs> the problem i've been facing i'm always smiling and i i generally go for a walk in my building and i would give this smile with behind my mask to so many people and nobody would smile back and i don't know if they're smiling back so this is a great content idea for indonesia <laughs> teaching people how to smile from behind their masks yeah. i mean it's been phenomenal i saw the the crew and i guess it goes back to our to our culture at the end of the day um, but i saw a lot of the cabin crew actually it came from them of this thing of you know i'm not being able to connect with my my customer we're not going up to them and serving them you're not greeting them in the same way that they did uh 
and they went and asked for for training almost on on gestures to say uh, and actively train themselves it was surprising to see the difference of uh, just the way in which small things like the way in which maybe makeup is applied even uh, to accentuate how you might be able to smile with your eyes uh, which is a consumer you never think think of it's not a tangible difference that you will associate but it leaves you with some small emotional feeling that something happened in that experience uh, or the kind of music that you play in the flight you know can we make it a bit more upbeat when everybody's relatively dead beat how do you get an optimistic tone uh, coming in over there those small things i think uh, drive low key long term affinity sure and i would definitely prefer the non makeup idea <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Nidhi, uh, I think uh, AI and ML obviously is influencing our industry a lot, and uh, I think measurement of digital and the role of AI and and Microsoft Cognizant Services has really, really progressed a lot. We'd love to have your views. What's the role of AI ML in this unprecedented new normal? <laughs> yeah, we make so. Um... you know let's let's step back for a minute and figure the purpose of this transformation that we're talking about right so we believe that the essence of any digital transformation journey its purpose is actually is to generate value um and technology becomes the means to an end so how do you generate value and i think ajay also spoke about it earlier that this can be achieved by focusing on the people within your organization first so how do you align the leadership teams and various business leaders behind what you're trying to achieve in marketing through digital transformation and then you enable and empower your teams to create more do more solve more with the right technology so don't just go after the shiny toy first align the teams and then figure out what technology will help you enable and empower your teams and that is why at microsoft we believe that it's people plus process plus technology but people come first So now let's talk about the technology since the question was more on tech but I just wanted to kind of call that out since um, it was being spoken about earlier. So we look at technology as the as the bridge between the art and the science. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the art is creating the right story and the science is plugging it into the customer's journey in a seamless manner not as an intrusion and da 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 that we talk about right. So let's let's look at how AI and ML brings it to life. First of all you get to know your customer you start mm -hmm. with listening and reflecting and this is where empathy comes in i think uh, a lot of the panelists have spoken about empathy so this is where empathy comes in because you need to start with listening and reflecting you need to understand their journey and then you seed the market for effective demand creation and this is where brand storytelling comes in the right story the right context the customer's context and the right customer and that's where the right targeting comes in especially in our b2b world it's very critical to go out there the spray and pray as we call it doesn't work right i need to talk to the right customer at the right time in their journey so that's when we use data and insights to identify the right interventions and also cork the leaky buckets that might exist so you continually optimizing performance thanks to all the data and insights that you're getting from the from the engine and then it and that data and insight actually contributes to how the buyer driven multi touch journey is is going forward versus one engagement is one lead you know we are we're all past that uh, just because somebody engages with your content doesn't mean that that's a lead you know all of this done right is when you accelerate the customer journey you drive sales velocity and you deliver on the lifetime value that the board is asking you to deliver so we at microsoft track marketing engagement index and map it back to the sales stage that the customer customer is at so you could be a highly engaged customer but you don't have a pipe in my system or you could be a customer which is low engaged and also has no pipe so you know then we define okay this is the seller's job this is the marketing's job this is the partner team's job this is how we all come together and make it happen so marketing engagement index or marketing engagement this modern marketing concept is fundamental to everything we do here so yeah uh, quite an exciting learning yeah so actually you know i was having a discussion with somebody about ai and ml and we were discussing that if today somebody were to make tom and jerry cartoon which would earlier take thousands of people to make can be done with two people but we don't make tom and jerry anymore so we make shrek we still requires thousands of people so i think the more and more ai and ml comes in our expectations as marketers expectations as consumers keep on going up 
exponentially. So the tasks required mm -hmm. keep on increasing accordingly, right? So, so yeah. Rushira, on okay. that, I would come to you. I think in the as a role of marketing and our roles as as brand managers, are we going to play a more pivotal role? Uh, because post pandemic, like, is it going to be going to influence business model, profit formula? Because it's it, earlier we used to talk about digital marketing and marketing. Now, digital is the age we're living in. So, what do you think this transition is going to be like? No, absolutely. I mean, first of all, uh, for a lot of people who are either on the panel or listening in, I'm sure that's good news. But beyond the fact that we want to, you know, make yourself feel a little better about it. Um, I, a lot of people have spoken about empathy and about staying close to the consumer decision journey. I think um, if you look at it, the tools have expanded dramatically for the, <coughs> for the, for the market here. And uh, like Nidhi was saying, it's not just about engagement, but where are you in the journey and how can I get you further? But I think what this pandemic has done in particular is it has even it has heightened the need to get closer to the consumer. So when I was talking about earlier, the technology comes first, it was not that uh, you know, you, you don't have empathy because technology is meaningless if you don't understand what role it has to play in the life of the consumer, right? Only a marketer today in an organization is resourced to understand what is the role of this product in the life of that consumer. And particularly in this point in time, whether it's selling a bag of Lay's, which gives you that treat and that moment of connect, whether it is KFC, which my daughter just picked up on Saturday as her ultimate treat moment, you know, with her friends, uh, you know, you name it. Only as a marketer and someone who's close to those insights do you understand it. But if you stop there and you make it a case, and I think a lot of people have spoken about it, have, have make a case about getting closer and being empathetic, you'll find that at this point in time when businesses are trying to conserve as much as they can on their cash flows and maximize really outcomes, it's going to fall on deaf ears. What we've done at HMD is uh, over the last uh, six months, and you know we saw this maybe coming a little early uh, because uh, we saw in our global markets, so China is a market, APAC is a market for us, and we saw already uh, the impact happening in early Feb, and we could see some of the repercussions of markets shutting down, etc., coming through. And then there was Europe, which is which is a large part of our business as well. So we saw it coming. And, and therefore, saying, how do you impact that journey for the consumer and employ all your tools at the right moment? Nidhi spoke about it, and as did a lot of other people. So going omni-channel is something that's no longer, it's not a fashionable word. It's not something that's just you know like on trend. It's something that you've got to do. You've got to be, at that moment, helping the consumer. So the number of consumers who are desperately looking for a device, right? Um, you know, uh, when Kerala opened up, Kerala was the first state in India to open up. And on weekends, on a Sunday, you could go in and all mobile stores would open. It was the only state that opened up mobile stores. Consumers were walking and buying the first device. They didn't ask for finance. They didn't ask for discounts. They didn't ask for anything. They wanted to know that they had a reliable and a trusted brand that they could buy. And yeah, I mean, when we do really well in those markets. So it was amazing how they'd come in, but also they were looking for brands under a certain price because they didn't want to spend too much money. They wanted it in a certain way. They wanted to have certain features and functionality because it had to enable the Arogya Setu app without which they couldn't move around. So suddenly uh, there was this whole slew of, of needs that they had, which, which could have been reinterpreted maybe six months ago into a completely different set of needs. So to your point, one, knowing that the shop is open in my locality. Two, what are those hours? Three, how fast can I go in? What are the options? Can I talk to you about the options that exist? So that when you walk in, it's a seamless process and your safety is not compromised because suddenly the biggest thing in my head when I'm going through anything from food delivery at home to you know to my neighborhood retail store is how safe am I in that context? Who's pulling all of that together, right? And therefore, that seamless understanding of insights to go to market to that product proposition. I mean, do you sell a bigger bag of chips because people are going to be at home and sharing with their family versus, you know, focusing on just a price point, uh, flavor innovations, because you can't travel, so you might want to eat. I'm sorry. I mean, it's obviously a category I'm still very passionate about. But for HMD, I mean, it was an opportunity, and I'm sure Microsoft saw, saw that as well, where people were looking for technology to solve their problems. And therefore, how, how you could get to them, not just about targeting them and talking to them on the right part of their journey, 
but also how you could get to them in that moment of truth and be there physically with them without you know the person to person interaction became a very very important so it was incredible how fast we were able to ramp up you know what used to be traditionally the you know just a lead or a or like on facebook to something that was actually more about delivering a physical good uh in in let's say in patna in bihar in kerala and wherever it was we had red amber and green zones mapped up in may and we were talking about which markets you could open up to and deliver to people you know so and and who did that i mean at the end of the day it's an intersection it's always cross functional there are lots of people it is empowered teams like they talk, talked about right someone sitting at a local level who comes up with an innovation and you ramp it up but if you pull all of that together the center of gravity and the strategy finally does come back to how do you reach the consumer at the moment where you are the most valuable for them and that at the end of the day, and revenue maximization sure. at that yeah. point and and while revenue sounds like a really really you know like like a you know like a it's a very shylockian term in this moment but the fact is they want they want that they're willing to pay for that service our, our challenge was that people were saying i want your device and of course there was this whole you know uh geopolitical situation evolving so suddenly nokia became a brand of choice you know and and at that point in time not yeah. Yeah. altruistic and not become materialistic and say hey you know this is who we are it takes a lot of restraint as well so my point your sure. purpose and your authenticity has to stay in place so it, it was it's very fascinating sorry so I I just want to just take one round uh, with all the panelists uh, quickly and then we'll come back to you for uh, some more insights. So I think uh, but I agree you know I think I've seen a lot of vendors around our houses small medium scale enterprises they all have suddenly transformed themselves so quickly uh, and it's just unbelievable means my wife has been buying sarees online and the amount of instagram ads that she sees uh, all around now and she negotiates like and she tells me that this sari would cost x and now going for 110x i said it's still very expensive at 110x but i've seen that suddenly the whole digital has gone it's no longer demographic no longer gender it's this the entire population so on this note uh, aji i'd like to come to you i think uh, in a way your business was sort of built pre covid for post covid so we talked about collaboration being a competitive advantage uh would love to have your views on what are the things you've done to stay ahead of the curve and how that collaboration is being able you are able to leverage it well now yeah so wait let me just distinguish ourselves from possibly the other brands in the market or the other brands on this panel one is uh, we are not a touch and feel brand right and uh, uh, two is uh, we are not a category that people wake up in the morning and say i want a mutual fund or a life insurance or health insurance so i think the pre work we had done in anticipation of a consumer need rather than a covid uh, opportunity was that we said let's look at the consumer and his need and his need was to have a good life his need was not to have a, a mutual fund or a life insurance and we said how do we bring in money in the context of life and therefore we are the only single mother brand in the industry today who says a to z of your money needs in the context of your life and therefore i think the first and the biggest learning for us pre covid and i think it becomes more relevant after covid is how do you dis remain distinct rather than part of the bhed chal and i think what covid taught us what is bhed chal i think the day covid hit everyone started sending out mails i am available online i am available on website i am available on call the first person who did it i said good the second person who did it i said great the third person did it i said hey isn't that the norm why are you suddenly making that into a hero and when you talk about collaboration i think the exact same example vivek i had a great offer to have uh, a newspaper reach the house of my customers uh, and it was a win win situation the media house gets circulation like never before we have 20 million active customers i'm sure very few have those circulations and for me it's great that hey you don't have a newspaper i'm bringing it to your house very exciting but i think what's important to see is that within the first week the same offer was made to every single brand and every brand was offering it luckily we didn't fall for that i think therefore being different in collaboration and being true to your brand 
and what your brand represents rather than rushing into the first opportunity to tie up so collaboration gives you the expansion collaboration gives you the entry points you never have before but how can you create relevance to that collaboration is a learning for us second whether it's abc that we formed or abc that is needed today in these times that is aditya billa capital i think it became important for us that many people got tempted to sell their product sell their brand ride the bandwagon and today is the best time right i don't know if you've seen this on youtube they have actually taken an edit of some 10 or 15 of the biggest brands in the world and taken their films and made it into one film and it's amazing to see that every brand is saying the same thing i care for you we are there for you we've always thought of you and things like that the same words but different nomenclatures by leading brands in the world so ye bhed chal mein how do you differentiate yourself and i think yes our whole architecture is different our whole go to market strategy is changed we are saying we are the only single brand in the country single financial services brand that really helped us in collaboration within our businesses so let's just try like i told you in these times what are the few things everyone wants you normally say roti kapda or makan in today's time people wanted they had health worries and wealth worries now we are in collaboration within the aditya birla capital banner because we have health insurance business and we have life insurance business and we have mutual fund business uh, we have wealth management business we have shares and broker it's all within our banner itself so that what vivek it very kind of you to say that collaboration we did before from a customer perspective rather than help us in good stead and therefore in this times we have tried to not sell our category we've not we've tried not to sell our brand we've tried to address apprehensions and fears so if you see on facebook for example we have a health and wealth platform and we have podcasts on health and wealth there is nothing about aditya birla capital or its product it's your needs my belief is that in collaboration with a brand if you like what i say you will ask me hey don't you even have the solution for example every day we started during the lockdown but lockdown continued we continued our health insurance business is on facebook every day whether it's your nutrition needs whether it's your health needs whether it's your uh, uh, yoga needs whether it's a, a doctor on call so we started collaborating with people and brands who can extend the relevance of just health insurance to health sure and so i'm going to initiation yeah so i'm going to ask my last question to moksh uh, uh, what are the discussion that are having that digital has now become mass media and i think the biggest challenge we face is that you know digital has always operated in the bottom of the funnel so it's almost like performance based right but now it becoming mass media we need to completely rethink creativity and uh, i was talking to aggy from taproot who is part of our network and we were discussing of how do you actually create mass media kind of creativity on digital and i think we were having a discussion on it would love to have your views how do you fuel creativity on digital yeah actually been quite interesting i think everybody has discovered creativity it seems like never before and everyone has seemed to have had a kitchen moment all during covid so it's been quite interesting and you know uh, kfc as a brand has often stood we I mean stand for originality so we we thought like people are being so creative what could we do to kind of become a bit of a platform for creativity and uh, even when the you know there was a lockdown we launched something called kfc home studios where we got like a massive amount of participation it was just providing a, a distinctive brand platform where people were partnering engaging with the brand and we followed that up with what we call home kitchen so of course there's a performance marketing omni channel our marketing like richard has said that was happening but we realized people are experimenting in the kitchen and we kind of encourage them to order in kfc and kind of create their own recipes and we had like thousands of unbelievable ideas that came up from people from kfc noodle kfc chicken stroganoff and what not and unbelievable participation and it was not like chefs it was just in fact internally the kind of entries we got internally was equally powerful like such amazing recipes so i think we got a pipeline of recipes coming up for the next two years basis this activation so just by pro providing a platform for creative creativity we found that people were giving us content almost 10000 hours worth of content is what we got back from consumers and the point was just to create a platform for them let them kind of create their own content the other interesting stuff we've been doing of awake is working with influencers like many you know on the panel would be doing um, 
the thing is, we've got some really good content going with them. We allow them to interact with the brand, not curb their style. That's something we learned very early in the journey. And over the last, you know, couple of um, last month or so, some partnerships with, you know, influencers like Danish Seth or Akshay Nair, they've all been like going viral. And the, the funny thing is like the brand is actually completely omnipresent in their content. But the content is so wonderfully done and we don't try, try to intrude too much into their style. And that's kind of come up with such amazing creativity that, I mean, I'm blown away. I couldn't imagine that, you know, putting your, typically when you show your product, people switch off, but the product was so seamlessly integrated by them. That was just a wonderful piece of content to watch. I think stuff like that. And we've typically found that the engagement rates for this content piece that we've been working on over the last three months, home studios, home kitchen, influencer partnership is at least two to three times what we regularly see when we put out content. So I think that's something we want to continue doing as people discover their creativity at homes and in the kitchen. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Moksha, I think uh, Gitik has come to put a stop to our panel. <laughs> so I think we've had a great discussion. I'm glad we were able to cover all the things that we wanted to cover. But thanks a lot, guys. This was awesome insights for all of you. Uh, pleasure to moderate this session. Gitika, over to you. Yeah. Thank you. No, no, we're Thank not letting you go so easy. Everybody stay with me. We have questions for you. I'm like red light at the signal that's just put on, you know, once we start <laughs> heading into a overtime zone. A couple of interesting things there. Ajay uh, saying that uh, the key will be to differentiate and moksh KFC noodles. <laughs> oh, good Lord. <laughs> I'm waiting to tell those. Popcorn noodles. <laughs> Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Vivek, I'm going to download that uh, Forest app. And uh, Mr. Gandhi saying that the biggest change happens between the years. Uh, so true. And uh, Ruchira, your uh, hyperactive digital disorder word was the word I've been looking for for the last many years. I found my disorder today. And I'm going to buy the Nokia 531 here. Okay. So, Vivek, I have these two questions for you. For the panel, how effective uh, would be the COVID-inspired digital strategies in a post-COVID world? One, should I give you the next one? You first want to deal with the first uh, bullet coming your way. Yeah, I think how uh, effective would be the COVID? Uh, how how effect how effective would be the COVID-inspired digital strategies in a post-COVID world? So I'll share my view. Uh, hmm. I've been in the digital industry for 20 years plus. Actually, digital industry took off in India in 2012, as far as I was concerned. Because basically what happened was that 2008, 2009, a lot of uh, brands uh, got curtailed spending because of the financial disaster that the country and the world faced. And then they tried digital a little bit and they never went back to conventional media in the same way. So a lot of digital things that have happened today have just started and we should have taken as Ajay said 10 years it's, it's happened in four months so now it's just going to accelerate a lot of people are not going to go back what happened in 2008 onwards and that transformation happened the same thing on e-commerce digital is continuing and a lot of brands who have tasted I would say blood on digital are not going to go back digital transformation is going to get accelerated and I think a lot of People who had like this digital transformation proposals from agencies like ours gathering dust somewhere in the drawers have suddenly all come out. <laughs> so I don't think they are ever going back into the drawers. That is my two bits on it. But anybody else can contribute if they want to. Anyone else would like to add to that? I think it's Somebody all the next up? normal consumer now. You know, mm -hmm. to add to your, your lexicon, it's not the new normal, it's the next normal consumer. Uh, just as an example, I know there are 500 million people who are on uh, digital in India, which is more, I think, more than the US and Mexico and Canada put together. Yeah. I think that's the number. But uh, if I if I look at the next normal consumer, that's the consumer who's now entered. Imagine that's another 700 million to go before we exhaust potential. So that's one point, whatever, four times. The point being, those guys are coming in faster than ever, and they expect very different experiences. So. I don't. I just see this acceleration, and you know, there's that point in term when the when inflect that inflection point. Uh, to Vivek's point, this is the inflection point. Uh, so, so those, I have a contrary point, or I support. It's up to you to decide. I just believe that if at the end of COVID, I believe that you forced me, or I was forced to use you, 
I'm not coming back. And if I find it was so great to use you, why the hell didn't I discover you before? I'm never leaving you. It's as simple yeah. as that. Agree. As simple yeah. as that. All of, all of you watching, you've got your mantra. We have the next question here for the panel. Uh, how often should digital strategies be revisited? Do they have a shelf life? Very interesting question there. So I'll give 30 seconds. I think digital is about taking a compass in your hand and you start walking in the right direction rather than trying to create a blueprint. Yeah. So when you have a compass in your hand, you start walking then you automatically keep on revisiting it. So you fire bullets, throw the cannonball, the classic Jim Collins theory. So digital is about making a move, right? A lot of people waste a lot of time in trying to create a blueprint and then keep revisiting the blueprint, which is idiotic. So digital is about taking your comes in your hand and you start walking. That's my two bits. Yes. Anyone else would like to add briefly and then we'll wrap up. I'll just say one thing. I feel like we, I mean, just to uh, just build off what Vivek said. I think if we use digital and tech to not transcend the human experience, we just find a way to kind of support it. So the more we can do around those lines, the more it's going to be sustainable. Then you're in, the minute you're in touch with the consumer, you're using digital as a support strategy to the consumer experience, not as a strategy in itself, which is where perhaps the problem sometimes lies. So that's what I'll summarize on. Thank you all for joining us at day two of Tech Munch. Uh, for the of time, we'd have to move forward. Otherwise, this is just the most fantastic panel I've heard over the last few months. Thank you very much, all of you. And thank you, Vivek. Honorable moderator. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good day ahead. Thank you for having thank us. Thanks for having us. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.